I'm still on my quest to find the perfect 14-inch laptop. I need something powerful enough to do 4K video editing, has decent battery life and great peripherals like the keyboard, speakers, and display. I'm also a frequent casual gamer, but any laptop with enough grunt to do 4K video editing can play most games just fine, like the modern AMD and Intel Arc integrated graphics solutions. The current reigning champion in my inventory is the 2022 Asus Zephyrus G14 when equipped with G Helper, a thick boy 14 inch laptop with an AMD CPU and dedicated Radeon GPU, plenty of memory and a 120Hz mini LED screen. So far its closest rival was the Lenovo ThinkPad P14S Gen 3, which lost in a direct comparison only by a couple points. Can the latest ThinkPad P14S with updated specs dethrone the Zephyrus as my preferred mobile daily driver? Let's find out in this full review. Slab Tech. This then is the AMD version of the ThinkPad P14S Gen 5. It goes for $1,500 on Lenovo's website when they haven't lost their damn minds and sell it at a fair price. It comes packed with the latest AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 8840HS, which is exactly the 7840 from last year, but with added AI cores to do AI things. Don't ask me what to do with AI cores, I don't care. Included in this CPU is the Radeon 780M integrated GPU with as much imaginary VRAM as you're willing to set aside from system memory up to 8 gigs. For regular system memory, there's 64 gigs of DDR5-5600 here in two 32 gig sticks that can be taken out, kissed, and then put back in. One terabyte of NVMe SSD storage is what's available out of the box, and these bits sit underneath a gorgeous 14-inch 1800p color-accurate OLED panel that officially does 60 Hz but has a secret 120 Hz mode that Lenovo doesn't advertise on their website. Powering it all is a very average 52 watt hour battery and the whole package weighs impressively just under 3 pounds. Compared to the Gen 3 that I reviewed last year, what's new is obviously the updated processor but also the upgradable memory and OLED display option. I'll be highlighting the rest of the updates as I go. The AC adapter included in the box is a tiny 65 watt USB-C unit. It has 9 feet of cord length or 12 feet with an upgraded from the wall cord. It's the same unit as the Gen 3. Unfortunately, the battery life has taken a hit since a couple generations ago. Internet work use is down to 5 hours and streaming video only lasts for 4. At least the TPM issues that plagued the third generation don't seem to be affecting YouTube playback in Chrome anymore. Sorry Firefox, you've been good to me, but I don't need you anymore. 2D retro gaming also lasts for 4 hours and PC gaming will kill the battery in just 45 minutes. It's a workstation and wants to guarantee a good time so them their watts will be delivered to the CPU, even with battery saver on. The build quality has gone down oh so slightly this year. The third generation P14S was wrapped in seductive magnesium alloy. This laptop is encased in high quality plastic. Fingerprints are less visible thanks to the darker tone of the body but are still a bother to see and nearly impossible to completely wipe off. The monitor is as rigid as ever, taking quite a bit of force to torque around, and now the ThinkPad logos are a dark reflective plastic on top and an impression in the palm rest, but do blend in a little better without a border like the previous Chrome insignias. There are zero tangible improvements, just stylistic changes, but the downgrades aren't a big deal. With any luck, future generations will get the magnesium shell back, or hopefully, Chrome ThinkPad logos. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. On the right, there's a smart card thing for business uses, SIM card slot, USB A3.2, gigabit LAN, and a lock slot. The back is where the heat farts out, I mean, exhausts. And the left is where we get the dual Thunderbolt 4 ports, Lenovo's words not mine because AMD, HDMI 2.1, the second USB A3.2, and headset in. They can't be true blue Thunderbolt ports because not Intel, but they can both take a jolt to charge the laptop and output to the DisplayPort 1.4 standard. I'm just glad there are two USB A ports on different sides of the laptop. And do I have to wait for Gen 6 to get a card reader now? Asking for a friend. Seven screws hold the bottom cover on and immediately we see the biggest improvement that trumps all other changes, good or bad, upgradable memory. 
Lenovo has decided to start appeasing the right to repair crowd and have endeavored to deliver a ThinkPad that's just as upgradable and repairable as it is durable. They even boast of their 9 out of 10 repairability score from iFixit. In other news, we can see that the single trooper of a heat pipe carries heat away from the CPU to a single fan, our two memory slots are protected by a metal shield, and the NVMe drive has a big ol' heatsink on it. I'm so super stoked about the memory situation that I don't even care that the Wi-Fi card is soldered to the motherboard. Finally, the battery takes up the whole bottom of the laptop. Back on top is a keyboard. It's typical ThinkPad fare with no risks taken. All productivity-related keys are here on their own right, like home, and, and page up and down. The backlight is neutral white with two brightness levels. For the most part, things remain the same, but now to highlight the differences. Control has taken its rightful place on the very bottom left corner, something new for this generation. Another change, however minor, is the feel of the keys. The Gen 3 keyboard is soft, with keycaps that melt silently under presses. This Gen 5 keyboard is noticeably more firm and clicky. In order to get used to it, I've had to change how I type on a ThinkPad. It's still a very good keyboard, but feels like a downgrade. At the end of the day, it'll get the job done, no matter the job, with grace and class. The touchpad is in straight-up defiance of the modern aesthetic. In a world that's steering violently in the direction of large, featureless mouse translators, the ThinkPad stands firm with the same size it's always had, and the quintessential physical keys, and you know what? I never thought for one second that I miss having a larger touchpad. As such, accidental actions with the touchpad are so few and far between, even while resting my palms. And if it does somehow get in the way, you can disable it and use the f***ing amazing nipple mouse. Personally, I adjusted the sensitivity to make it less excitable and decreased the acceleration of the scrolling feature, and it helped tremendously. I love it. Until it eventually starts drifting, which is always annoying. Looking up, there be OLED pixels here. Introduced in Gen 4, this screen pushes 1800p's of little dots, a much sharper picture than the standard 1200p. This model also came with 100% DCI-P3 color accuracy and plenty of brightness to show it off. There is a gloss finish to the screen with muted reflections that still allows for outdoor visibility on a cloudy day, and it gets plenty dim for a pitch black room. Colors don't pop out of the box and they aren't dull, a tricky balance that it pulls off with finesse. With the OLED technology comes very low ghosting and excellent latency that should tempt every casual gamer out there. A 120Hz option isn't advertised by Lenovo, but it is available to select, and it works great in applications or or games that can show it off. I wouldn't change a damn thing about this screen, it is absolutely perfect. What's less than perfect are the speakers. ThinkPads aren't known for their speakers, but they also aren't shunned for them. Forget bass, but don't give up on clarity and stereo separation. Mids could also benefit from a boost, but there's zero software interference, so everything comes out clean, natural, and with enough decibels to fill a room. Bass from Calm Like a Bomb from Bow to the Machine can be heard and understood, but deep bass from The Package by A Perfect Circle sounds exactly like the bare string and someone who's about to be fired for forgetting to plug in the amp. Here's a test of the webcam on the Lenovo ThinkPad P14S Gen 5, 1440p. This is an excellent lighting. And for comparison's sake, here's the Asus Zephyrus G14's webcam, 720p, in the same excellent lighting. Okay, could you turn that light off for me and turn on the, uh, oh, yeah. the, loud. the loud vent? Uh, and turn this light off for me, too, if you would. Oh, wow. Yeah. Whoa! Here's a test of the webcam in poor lighting. This is very poor lighting. And the oven fan is on, so we can test and see how well the noise reduction does on this webcam as well. 
And for comparison's sake, here is the exact same lighting conditions with the Asus G14, also with the oven fan on, in the background. System performance of the ThinkPad P14S Gen 5 is as good as it gets, at least when it comes to 14-inch laptops. The Ryzen 7 8840HS always gets the power it wants whenever it wants it. I never ran into a situation where less than 35 watts was fed to the CPU during intense workloads. For an 8-core 16-thread proc, that means 4K video editing will be a breeze, and that's backed up in this particular model by 64 gigs of RAM, which is completely fair in this case because the memory is 100% upgradable. While heavy workloads will compel the fan to spin, it never gets annoyingly loud, nor does the bottom heat up to unreasonable levels during regular office work. Be warned that compiling code or exporting a long project will turn it into a plastic heat plate, and an unprotected lap shall not be spared of discomfort. On to gaming. But wait a minute, this is a workstation, not a gaming laptop. Too bad! It might not have a dedicated GPU, but it does have a ridiculously good integrated graphics unit and just enough cooling to allow for its full potential to manifest. And that full potential has its hits and misses. Where it misses is that the latest titles will have to be reduced to 1000p in low details to get playable frame rates. At least they'll play, which is more than I can say for thin and light laptops that feed half as much power to the integrated GPU. Where it hits is that older and simpler games will play very well with a few sacrifices and up to 120Hz to boot. A bare lap is going to need a heat shield since the bottom will get uncomfortably, almost dangerously hot. Even on battery power, the CPU will take 35 watts and every joule can be felt through the derriere. On a positive note, performance is only down 10% away from the plug, but only lasts 45 minutes. Retro gaming works very well on this laptop, save for the battery life, naturally. While there are laptops with better speakers, these get the job done and aren't annoying in the slightest. And of course, the screen is great even if colors don't pop like on Lenovo's other product lines. The extremely low amount of ghosting and input lag removes the worst obstacles that plague other ThinkPads that weren't lucky enough to be fitted with this display. For the bottom line, it's easy to blindly recommend this laptop to most PC users. It has excellent peripherals and touches every usage scenario with versatility and authority. However, when taking into account the price tag, you'll find that it's rubbing elbows with some pretty nice 14-inch laptops like the Asus G14, Zenbook, Lenovo Slim 7 Pro, and the Acer Swift X14, all all of which tout similar specs and, in most cases, dedicated GPUs. I can already say that the usage experience is superior with the ThinkPad, but if playing today's games, or tomorrow's for that matter, tops the list of expectations, then more consideration and research is in your near future. Can this fifth generation ThinkPad finally replace the Asus G14 as my mobile daily driver? According to this nifty little chart, it can, but only because the styling of the G14 is trash. If it had the same great aluminum body from previous years, there would be no contest, but since its awesome hardware rests inside cheap white plastic, I've been dying to get my hands on a competent successor. The ThinkPad P14S with an OLED screen is just that. To me, it's an even trade to lose the longer battery life, dedicated GPU, and better speakers for the classy exterior and lighter weight. Every other difference is negligible. But wait, Joel Michael, what if I have an older P14S and want to update? Will it be worth it? Not if you have a Gen 3 with 32 gigs of memory. There's not enough difference between the 6850U and 8840HS to warrant an upgrade. The 680M is only 10% slower, and it won't be a significant jump in performance. Unless you really want the OLED screen, there's no reason to move up to the latest model. In conclusion, students get one thumbs up because it will cost the other thumb to buy it. On that note, there are cheaper versions of this laptop with less extravagant specs for less scratch. Keep in mind that the battery life leaves a little something to be desired. Casual gamers can totally go for something else. Don't get me wrong, this is the kind of PC you'd love to have, but at this price, you could get two 16-inch notebooks with GTX 1650s that will game circles around this. 
competitive gamers should stay away. Having dedicated home and end keys are nice and all, but they won't help you be awesome in Call of Duty 5. That's like saying being an awesome accountant qualifies you for contract killing. Sorry, you're not Ben Affleck, and even Ben Affleck couldn't be Batman long enough for a solo movie. Oh, don't blame Zack Snyder for letting DC fall apart. I blame you, Ben. I blame you. Desktop replacement users can definitely replace their desktop with this. It'll take some clever port usage in a hub, but there's an available LAN port, upgradable RAM, and more than enough power for long-term 4K video editing, and a great screen for photo editing on the go. Yes, it costs a lot of money, but that's because it's worth it. Home users will be just fine with a lower-end model. There should even be a cheap used P14S Gen 3 by now, around $700 that works wonders for YouTube around the house, and stirring the pot in the family texting thread with spicy op-eds about Trader Joe's pickled peanuts. This has been a review of the ThinkPad P14S Gen 5 here on SlapTech. If you found something useful in this review, or if I left out any details, let me know in the comments section below. Leave a like and subscribe to know when I post the next laptop review. I've got a few coming down the pike, so stay tuned for more. The next review is going to be about this tiny little ThinkPad. Yeah, I've been teasing it for a good year now, but I swear it's next. Thanks for watching, and you guys, yeah, have a good night.